So welcome everybody. I'm so glad to see so many people actually were able to join live. I know we're all so busy with all kinds of things. Um, and I have, I really have no idea what is going to come out of my mouth today. I don't really prepare anything in particular. Um, I did have the idea that I want to share with you my experience of, um, or maybe one of my first experiences with communicating with a spirit and also just invite you to the possibility that they exist that it's not, um, it's not that weird. It actually is like everyday stuff. It's just, you know, some things are seen and some things are not seen, but it doesn't mean that they're not here. And through the work that I've learned in access consciousness, especially with Talk to the Entities, which is a specific program, dealing with learning how to communicate, how to um, increase your ability to clear, communicate, and receive from spirits. Um, the, the inclusion of that into your life creates something so beyond what most people would think. And the thing is, is that we all have choice about it. It's not... It's not something you have to do, but a lot of people find that when they turn towards this ability, that their life gets easier, that the aches and pains in their body go away, that the paranoia or um, um, anxiety, other things that we experience are not health issues. They're actually um, awarenesses that we have of things that maybe we're not asking questions about. And many, many times it turns out to be entity awareness. And what would it be like to turn towards that? Start to include those energies and the possibility and just have more ease. So welcome to the new people jumping on. Um, there's, there's a huge amount of energy that just started to rush in. So I'm gonna ask everybody if you would please take a deep breath, lower your barriers. Um, when, when we start talking about spirits, like they all like come in and it's like, oh, this energy here. So. Take a deep breath, expand out. Thank you. Wow, that feels better for me. <laughs> and when we lower our barriers, we, um, we can have more ease with the awareness that we're perceiving. Okay, cool. So um, I'll just talk a little bit about my growing up and my experience with communicating with my brother. Um, I was always interested in psychic abilities, telepathy. I thought it was cool. I don't, how, how do you guys see it? Do you think it's cool and fun and neat? Or is it like, oh God, no, that's not. Yeah, cool. So um, for me, it was just, naturally a curiosity and I did whatever I could to try to work out that muscle. And um, I played little psychic games with myself <laughs> to build that. And it was just fun. And then, you know, going through life, living my life, just as a quote, normal person with these psychic abilities, um, right around my brother's, uh, 30th birthday, 
he like we all could sense actually in our family we all could sense that there was something that was going to happen and there was like this tremendous sense of urgency to connect with him and i remember trying to like trying to get him to come out and visit me i just knew something was going to happen and um one particular day he was on his motorcycle and he was in a horrible accident and the ambulance came and brought him to the hospital and that whole day i just remember being so filled with anxiety and angst i didn't know what was going on i was in california and he was in boston and um i even remember calling my sister and um then i found out that he was in this accident and so i booked a ticket home on the red eye and while i was getting ready for takeoff i just i just sat in my seat and lowered my barriers and did some breathing and all of a sudden he was there he was like in my head and we were talking telepathically and i'm like what happened you know and i got this sort of movie vision from seen from his eyes of what happened how he was on his motorcycle going around this curve of this street i could see the street i knew exactly where it was in boston and a train coming because they had you know street cars and somebody pulling out from a parking spot and he like swerved, but he didn't want to hit the train. So like the car clipped his motorcycle and, and he flew through the air and he was kind of stupid. He didn't put his um, helmet buckle on. So it flew off, he landed on his head and he like flew out of his body and he looked back and he was like, oh fuck because <laughs> he could see that was his body back there. Um, and so I knew from this whole experience that he experienced no pain and that he was communicating with me. I thought he was still connected with his body. Um, and so we just had this conversation like, wow, what's that like? And he's like, you know, if you think of me, I can be there in a second. And um, it was just a really calming, wonderful, peaceful experience. And then we took off and I was like, oh, cool. You know, everything's fine. I've communicated with him. He's fine. You know, he's going to go back to his body and I'll get to Boston and I'll go visit him. And it turned out when I landed like five o'clock in the morning um, that they had pulled the plug on the respirator. I guess he was on a respirator at that moment when I was taking off, when we had that communication. And so, you know, for a good few minutes, I was upset that I missed him. But then I was like, wait a second, I didn't actually miss him. He came to me, he talked to me, we communicated. And it was like, I couldn't buy into the lie of he's gone. How many of you do that? It's like you, um, you say he's gone or they're gone and you feel this really heavy sense but the heaviness is your body giving you an awareness that it's not true. And what, what was actually true is that he was still around, his body was gone. And that felt lighter. And when you get to the lightness, that's when you know what's true. So I just had, I felt like I was walking through all of the motions with my family and you know the funeral and all that like like in this space of peace and knowing that he wasn't gone and when other people were upset i could just 
share something and they thought I was crazy and weird <laughs> until I until I would say something that made them realize that what I was communicating was actually true. Jennifer's like, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, crazy stuff. Like they were looking for his suit, you know, to dress him in and, and they'd be like, Julie, ask Jeff where his suit is. And I'm like, <laughs> First of all, you don't believe me. And then you ask me a question like that. So I would like do my little meditation thing and ask him and I came up with some name of somebody that I didn't even know. And Jennifer, my sister would be like, oh my God, that's his friend. <laughs> and so we found a lot of, um, we found a lot of things that would make them sort of come out of the delusion that this reality and what you see is all there is. And there was one time I remember going down, um, sitting in the temple with you, Jennifer, and, <laughs> and he kept giving me messages to tell different people. <laughs> can I, I know I can hardly say it. <laughs> She's like, um, okay, expand that. Um, he said to tell her that he'll miss her most of all. And she was like, okay, now I believe you. <laughs> and the thing is, is that for you, when you have the lightness, even though it's something sad, like the person's body isn't going to be there, they're not going to be in your life in the same way. If you are open to the possibility of some other communication, some other um, um, connection, then you can create that. And it gives you a beyond this reality sense of joy and peace. Because most of us who are interested in this kind of thing know that this isn't the only lifetime, right? This many, many lifetimes. And when we're here on this planet, we're, we're under this huge delusion of time and what time is, but when we're not hooked into this reality, time sort of doesn't exist. And our connections go beyond time. And the other thing that's really cool is um, you can invite those people who have departed to come find another body and come play with you in this lifetime with another body. It's totally possible. Sorry, my nose is running. <laughs> So there's not only people entities, people who leave bodies, but there's also entities um, that, that are things. Car is an entity, a house is an entity, a song is an entity. There's all kinds of spirits. And there's also spirits that are like light beings that are here to contribute to us, to show us joy and possibilities that maybe we've forgotten as we've learned how to live in this reality and do the right thing and not do the wrong thing, not be too different and weird. So turning towards this spirit world and starting to open to it and allowing it to contribute to your life changes things in such magical, miraculous ways. Yeah. And so there's, 
there's this body of work called Talk to the Entities, which includes all kinds of tools for you to be able to learn how to communicate, how to clear, how to receive from, and how to cooperate with all kinds of spirits. And we do this through uh, workshops. There's introductory workshops where we just start usually clearing all of the points of view of fear of this work, <laughs> because there's a lot of fear. And then when we get underneath that, all the ways that we cope with our awareness without using turning toward it, we usually shut it off. Because the thing is, if you don't want to know about entities, you won't. But oftentimes, as I was saying in the beginning, it, it starts to wear on you and it starts to create problems in your body or in your um, emotional states. Um, I mean, just imagine going into a room with a whole bunch of people and nobody acknowledges you. And especially people that you care about, nobody acknowledges you. That's what they're dealing with. They're like, hey, I'm here. And you're like, I don't want to know that. I don't want to see you. That's too scary, <laughs> you know? And so you put up these walls and then, you know, then you start to have aches and pains in your neck or you start to feel nervous or you start to have voices in your head and you think you're going crazy. Um, a lot of times people have suicidal tendencies and it's not them, it's they're, they're picking up other people's stuff, other people's thoughts, other people's emotions. So it's not only for peace and for joy and for communicating with your loved ones, but it's also for having a more well-rounded, healthy um, life, I guess, you know, including the spirit world expands the spirit world and it expands yours as well. I wonder if you have any questions right now. And anybody can come off mute. I have a question. Yeah. It's when I mentioned the loss of the older sister in the Afghan family that I'm close to, mm -hmm. you said that it would have to be somebody in the family that would ask you to be in touch with her. Is that always true? Because I haven't met her, but I know the family. I haven't met the family in Kabul, but I've been in touch with um, some of them with you know Viber or WhatsApp and and I'm and the ones that I know in Virginia are like my other daughters they call me mommy so I've been very you know sad and heavy over this loss because they are de they're desperate mm -hmm. they're just devastated so I just wonder so, no you don't have to have met the person um, what I was saying then is if they wanted some sort of relief or some sort of assistance to learning how to communicate, um, that they would have to ask his. Right. Of course. You know, yeah. That's what I meant. Um, but yeah, entities will come to those who they know can perceive them. And even though you can perceive them, you may not want to. <laughs> and so you can be like, no, I don't want to deal with that. Um, what's really cool is that the awareness is always there. And so eventually, if you ever do want to 
look at it, you can look throughout your life and go back in time to way in the past when you were a little kid and you can go, oh my God, was that an entity awareness back then? And you can actually facilitate that moment from now, which is really cool. As I was doing this training um, last week, I had many, many recollections of things that came up um, from an awareness of, oh, wow, an entity awareness can be this feeling that I have in my body. And I never recognized that that could be linked to entities. And then I looked back through my life when I had that feeling in my body and I, I thought, oh, you know, if it was in my leg, let's say, any time that I had that weird feeling in my leg, if I had just misidentified it as, oh, I worked out too hard or, oh, I, you know, tripped or did something physical, then I'm missing that other awareness. And so a lot of those things um, came up and I was able to shift it. And it's just this subtle thing it doesn't seem to make sense to most people, but what's cool is, you know, for you, when you change something and when you get the lightness. And so if you've had something in the past that you thought was something else, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, could that be uh, an entity thing? And then you change it. It's changed. There was a woman who had um, a skin condition and there was there was no reason to have it. And she did all kinds of medical stuff and nothing went away. And eventually um, Shannon, the, the founder of Talk to the Act, uh, Entities, um, did a session with her and she came to the awareness that the skin condition was entity awareness that she hadn't stepped into. And as soon as she did, it started to change and I've seen her now and her skin is completely clear, clean and different. It's really interesting. Each one of us has very different awareness about entities and how it shows up for us. Um, and so going through the course and learning the tools and seeing how it is for each one of us, strengthens that muscle. And at the same time, as you strengthen the muscle and you have more awareness, it expands your ease and it expands your joy. And it can also expand your bank account. So if, if that person is coming to you, you can ask them, you know, what, what are they, what would they like? You know, do they want something from you? Do they want to contribute something to you? Do they want to give a message to somebody else? There's this whole flow chart that's quite amazing that breaks down all the questions that you can ask. Cause you know, when you get that in your space, it can be a little confronting and you forget all those things. So we have this great flow chart and you can take each question and, and look at it and get what's true for you and move throughout the process. And at the end of it, um, they're either cleared or you receive the message or you can um, pass the message on or whatever it is. And then there's this amazing lightness in your universe that like ripples across the entire world. It's so cool. That's one of the perks. <laughs> Julie had a question. Hi. Hi. Um, thanks for having this call. I've, I've got like a swelling in my leg, my, like in my ankle. I never had it before. And today it's been super painful. I've, I've had, I've also had my hair cut and I had the thought, oh, I look like my mother, like my mother died a few years ago. 
So I've had my mom in my mind today and my grandma because my grandma had rheumatoid arthritis in her mm-hmm. legs. So I don't know, but there's something. <laughs> there's something. Well, yeah. So is it is it that? Is it the awareness of one or both of them? I think it could be both. Cool. And so the like the first thing about learning this communication is to not make anything significant. As soon as we make something significant, we stick ourselves. So expand out. And just acknowledge, oh, hi, you know, are you here to give me a message? Do you want something from me? Do you want to just say hi? And I I get they want love. They want me to love them. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Remember them. And then you have choice. And so this call isn't really about facilitation. Um, I'm doing a follow-up intro telecall it's 90 minutes on friday the 13th i thought that would be fun (laughs) that's next Mm -hmm. friday i believe um and then there's a weekend class the the intro is online but the weekend class has to be done in person and i'm here in california Um, let's just see if chuck's question i can address before we end today Thanks, Julie. Um, I was wondering if you have had any experience with pets or animals. I, I have had sense of my dog, Happy. He passed away in March. He would have been 17 in May. And yeah. that is sense of his presence and visualizing him. And there were major, multiple signs that have been sent from the other side, just as reminders and consolation of him. Um, so that's the one question. A uh, second is if if someone communicates through someone else, would that other person be a medium as well? And then I just wanted to comment on, on your brother's um, death or, or rebirth into the next realm. The idea of him, him saying he didn't experience any pain at that time and the separation of the body. And I've heard that from someone else where a very terrible death uh, did not, the person did not experience pain because they separated from their body and were kind of looking at their body uh, at the time of the suffering. Uh, So I just wanted to comment on that, but the pets and the alternative person is the question. Yeah, there's definitely lots of people who have experienced stuff with pets. Actually, Dana on here (laughs) had a cat that um, she actually asked for that cat spirit to show up in another body and to let her know when so that she could go and find it. And eventually she found it and she has it. So that is totally possible. I know lots of people that have experienced that. Um, So, you know, it's just a matter of asking. And, And when they're around and you feel them, just letting that energy in. Like it doesn't take anything. It's just really just lowering your barriers and letting the energy in. It feels good. It's like having a hug. Just because their body isn't there doesn't mean they're not there. So yeah, that's probably where I would start the intro is (laughs) everywhere you've misidentified people's being with their body or pets being with their body. Instead of recognizing that there's both and there's there's consciousness in a body and there's consciousness in a being. Um, So to be very clear on what it is that you're articulating when they're gone, they're not gone, they're there. It's their body is transformed and they have transformed. And what would you like now? How would you like to create your relationship now? And the thing about the medium, you know, I guess I don't use that word medium. Maybe it's a thing in the world 
Um, I, I think everybody has this ability. And once you put labels on it, people make it significant and then they want somebody else to tell you what you should know. And all of the work of access consciousness is empowering each one of us to know what we know and that each one of us has awareness and it can grow. And the more awareness we have, the more inclusion we have of everyone and everything, the more we're creating consciousness on the planet. In access consciousness, the, the definition of consciousness is awareness and inclusion of everything without judgment. And what would it be like to live in a world like that? So... I just wanted to keep this short and sweet. I really appreciate all of you being here. And um, I really hope that if you have any interest, please choose more of this, whether it's this coming intro or something in the future or some other person, there's hundreds of us in the world. It just adds so much to your life. And I encourage you to choose it. And reach out if you want me to come to your town <laughs> and do some intros there. I think that would be fun. Anything else before we end? I think there was one more question. I didn't see who it was, but there was one more person. Oh, go question. for it. That was me. Yes. That was me. Uh, I got a question. You said you just loved ones. What about the ones aren't wanted in your life that are sucking <laughs> you dry? <laughs> there are tools for dealing with that as well. And we will go over that in the intro. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. You're yes, so I, welcome. I wonder at the word entity. I think it's kind of an off-putting word. I'd rather use spirit or something a little lighter. Yeah. Because well, I've heard entity, the word entity in a negative term. It, the entity is simply a being that has an identification with a body or no, sorry, that doesn't have an identification with a body. And you know, we can just clear all of our points of view and just <laughs> receive it as it is. And you can use whatever word you like. <laughs> awesome. Well, how is everybody feeling? Is anybody feeling a little lighter, a little more energized? notice that because the, even this where we haven't even really done much um gives you the tiniest sense of what occurs when you start to include more in your life and what else is possible cool Happier, peaceful, yay. All right, well, come and play. Love to see you again. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love this. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.